ones that put you. You got no rights, man. It all comes back to the king. You got the right to do what the king tells you. The rights go to the king, and the king has got all the rights. And you know where the king is? I've got a hid in the desert, it's a little girl. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, King George, you mean, you know, he's from Ohio, you dig? In other words, we're in this world together, guy. Don't put it all on me and leave me carrying it. You leave me locked up the rest of my life and say it's all your fault. But if you, you know, be if responsible you, for your part of it. If you were ever going to have another trial like your friends and your supporters want you to do, then you'd have to go into court, or somebody would have to go into court and say, those people weren't killed for Charlie. Those people weren't killed because Charlie sent us there. Those people were killed because, and there's got to be reasons. Semantics, semantics, those people were killed for Charlie. You could say those people were killed for Charlie. For everything that Charlie stood for in his music was for survival in the planet Earth. I was trying to put the feathers back on the ground. There's some feathers over here they take off the ground. There's a place called Fountain of the World where a bunch of people got blown up. Some people from the Navy and the Second World War came in 1948 and they put dynamite up underneath the house when they opened up the Feather River. They said, the people with the money are taking the water and buying up the water in the desert and killing all the life on the planet and taking all the water and putting it in the city. So you got all this water going to these big cities and you're building these big cities, but you got no water over on the land. You've got no wildlife on the land. All the birds are dying, the bees are dying, all the animals are dying. You're not going to have any life on the earth. All life on earth is going to die unless you do something. So he decided he was going to do something. He got in there and he blew himself up. What happened? They covered it up, lied about it. You dig what I'm saying? It went on to another generation. The next generation picked it up. It came to my generation. I stood there trying to figure out what the hell was going on. Why am I doing this? Why am I sandwiched into this? Why do I have to worry about water? I mean, I'm not a naturalist. I'm, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm an outlaw, man. I'm a, I'm a, you know, I'm a street dog. I'm, not, I'm nothing. But here, I am with the world's problems. I got to figure out this and how that's going and where these things are happening. And then, and then I come and I sing it to my people. I said to Red of God, let's hold it to the holy. Start to roll the hand around those bamboos to bala. And then we're singing and we're going through the changes and they start jumping off and doing things. They jump in the middle and she says, there's a lot of coming in. You dig? So they jump in the boats and they go out and a big fire comes. They said, did you do that for the queen? You did it for yourself. You say you did it for the queen, but you did it for yourself because you knew if you did it, you did it good, you're going to get your reward for doing it because everything we do breaks down in the last days and the end of time. You've only got one thing. That's you. And whatever you do for yourself. So then they come to me and they say, well, we're in one with you. We want to be with you. We want to accept you as being one. You dig? I say, okay, I love you too. You know, we're all good friends. You know, I didn't push them people to do nothing. Them people did what they wanted to do. I didn't make nobody lay down for anything. If they didn't want to lay down, they didn't lay down. Okay, so you didn't send them. It wasn't done on your orders. The only thing, the only thing I did, I had a Confederate sword. I hung it in the kitchen. I said, don't lie. Okay. Anybody just ranch, don't lie. If you lie, the sword might jump off and come and get you. Uh, but I didn't, you know, I never had anything to do with directing, directing traffic, man. Okay. You know, I don't know how many times, how many ways it can be said, but it can be said the same way that it can be said again and again and over and over and over. Give me my rights in a courtroom, man. Give me my rights in a courtroom. Now, you had a little time to listen to me talk. Uh -huh. Do I sound like I'm incompetent or inadequate? Well, then why did they take my rights in the courtroom? Because Bugliosi was scared to death because I knew what happened. I could have took it apart and explained it. There was nobody in that family that wasn't willing to tell the truth. All the people were willing to say, yeah. Leslie said, yeah, I killed her. And they said, why did you kill her? I said, I killed her to stop the war. I said, and what did you think about when you killed her? I said, well, I said, at least you won't be killing, sending your kids to, to war. Why don't we do it in the road? And then all these kids are out here doing it in the road, you dig? And then you're singing all that stuff and saying, well, it's all Charlie's fault. Hey, man, I didn't write the songs. I, that's not my generation. My generation is Bing Crosby, man. I'm not a generation of the Beatles. I was in, uh, I was in uh, uh, Charlie Tuna in the, in the penitentiary of McNeil Island when they come out, what, 60s, all during the 60s? I was in Mexico City in the 50s. I wasn't even in the United States. I was in, in jails down south in the border, man. Okay. So let's look at a few little details. There was a story that you went to the house after the killings, did you? Uh, no, you know what that is? No, here comes one of you, Fitzgerald. I got a lawyer because his name is Fitzgerald, and I thought the man with a name like Fitzgerald, surely 
there must be some soul in this piece of humanity. So I suggested that he take a portion of this pie and get into this because there's going to be some money here because all these vultures were picking everybody's bones apart, see? So Fitzgerald jumped up on the district attorney's side because it was easy. That's why Billy Graham is having, Billy Graham's daughter is having Italian babies right now. Because they moved the whole Catholic church over there in her, uh, up in the, those uh, procedures. Mm -hmm. You know, they so what off the top of the queen because she's doing that with the, uh, uh, what's that guy that got out of prison over there in India? Mugabe? Did you guys forget he was a convict? He got out of prison. You know, in other words, you guys get mm -hmm. stuck in the, uh, uh, Hitler got out of prison, right? Well, all those guys that got out of prison was in the same thought that I'm in when I got out of prison, okay. you know? So this guy Fitzgerald has got something to do with him. Yeah, Fitzgerald, uh, Fitzgerald, uh, uh, he read up on the law and says that the only way that they can keep from giving me a trial is they got to prove that I was in the, in the house when someone was killed or after someone was Okay, killed. so you didn't do it? No, I don't Somebody did. Somebody did what? Somebody went back to the house. Back to the house, what house? After, uh, to Seattle Drive after the killings. Who? We don't know, I'm asking you. Who you, told you, who you, told you that? Somebody heard them. Okay. There mm -hmm. was somebody on the other side of the canyon heard people in that house at four o'clock in the morning, that's four hours after the killings, mm -hmm. and they were having a big argument. Mm -hmm. Who do you think they were? Probably the maid. No, she didn't get in until when, when later on. Mm -hmm. Somebody went back they there. They do a lot of things. No, know, I don't think. The maids get around a lot, you know? Yeah, but they don't move a lot of bodies around, Charlie. I mean, it's, hey, hey, yeah. hey. they didn't do that. They didn't do that. You are an intelligent being. Rumor. No, oh, it wasn't a rumor. It wasn't a rumor. It was a, a kick. Damn the reason. Some, look at the effect, huh? Somebody, well, if we want to look at the effect, we've got to understand the reason. Hey. Somebody, listen. somebody heard. Listen, there's not a cockroach in that town I don't know. Okay. There's not a rabbit, there's not a fox, there's not hmm. a raccoon or a rat hmm. in the sewer pipe that I don't know. And I'll tell you, nobody was in that house from that ranch. So somebody from outside the ranch? That house was randomly, by mistake, it was just there, man. The whole thing jumped from the soul. It jumped from the soul. The guy took it off, decided that's what he wanted to do. Mm -hmm. There was no direction. It's like, you got a, we're circling people here. We're sitting in a circle, and it's hot, you know? And someone comes in with an orange sweater. And somebody says, man, I sure wish we had some something cold to drink, and someone says, uh, how about some orange juice? And someone says, uh, all right, whose conspiracy is it to go get the orange juice? The guy with the orange sweater? The guy that said he was hot? The guy that was the air conditioner? Or let's blame it on, who are we gonna blame it on? Let's blame it on somebody we can get away with blaming it on. Let's blame it on some convict that ain't got no money. Let's blame it on somebody with no education. When Bully O.C. seen me, I was custom fit for his ambition. When he got what he wanted, he moved New York City to Hollywood. He'd come up with Rambo and the dune buggy with the machine gun and the rat patrol, with the Russians and the black boxer coming off the helicopter pilot, him and Tom Selleck uh, playing off that black, uh, them black feet Indians, uh, playing all them other games coming down from another penitentiary. The whole thing is a playoff of crime. The whole thing is a playoff of the courtroom. The whole thing is a playoff of the children that get stuck in this game. This is what I want to end this up with. What I've got to tell you people is important to the life that you live. Well, we, I tell you, we want to hear all that. I mean, I don't want to sit here all day talking about the murders. I want to clear that out the way so we can talk about other things. There's more to you than that. But I tell you, I tell you, there's all these people all over the world, when they hear your name, they just think, Sharon Tate. That's all they know about you. Okay. Until let's clear that, let's get this out of the okay. way. Then okay. you the trash can and start All right. Off. Okay, let's, let's. God is the beginning. Okay, begin. let's do that. Begin. So you say. First it was the beginning. <laughs> Absolutely. It okay. All, all right. So Bullios. No, Bullios, he comes along and dumps it on you. You say. It was, you had, it wasn't your fault. It just happened around you. You once said that you, were, you weren't even there. You were in San Diego that night. Is that true? Yeah. I had a ticket. What did you do? In San Diego? Yeah, how come you got a ticket? What was it for? I got a ticket for uh, driving in a milk truck. I mean, was an uh, old milk truck. A little muffler or something, some old rag. Did anyone else see it? Yeah, a Stephanie Shram and a highway patrolman that gave me the ticket. But they moved him to the East Coast. 
here's another thing you got to realize man when you deal with social